It's great to be with you this morning at St. Peter's Church. I'm really delighted and grateful to God for the opportunity to speak to you today. I'm grateful to be invited to speak on the topic, Be Like Jesus. It's wonderful to know that as disciples, the Lord has called us to follow him and to follow his examples. So as we think on this topic today, let us bow our heads to pray. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, to the glory of God the Father, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. In our Bible reading from the Gospel of St. John this morning, we read the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000 men and women and children. Jesus is on the mountain where he normally lectures and teaches the people from because he has the advantage of standing up much higher than the crowd so he could project his voice and be able to minister to them. And then he turns to look at the crowd of people. The Bible here describes them as a great multitude, a great company of people in verse 2 of chapter 6. And then he turns to Philip, one of his disciples, and the other disciples, and asks them the question, how, will it, how can we feed these people? Have we got bread to feed them? Oh, wow. He said this in order to test them. And of course, the disciples just truly said, Master, even a month, one whole month, month's wage, one whole month's salary will not be able to buy enough bread to feed this multitude. And then up comes Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter. Hey, there's a lad out there who's just donated his lunch, his pack lunch, five rolls, five small barley loaves. The small barley rolls that the same type that we can make today and buy without leaven on it like the rolls that you have with the burger bread, when you have burgers, and two small fish. This was the lunch his mom had packed for him. But this young chap was prepared to share it. Well, Jesus takes control of the whole situation. He tells the disciples to tell the men to sit down in groups. And straight afterwards, he picks up the loaves and two fish, says a prayer over it, blesses it, and then hands it to the disciples to dish out to the crowd. They start dishing out the loaf and fish. And the 5,000 men, they didn't count the children, they didn't count the women. You can be sure there were women and children with them. The 5,000 men plus ate as much as they wanted to their fill. And Jesus said to them, gather up the fragments. And they gathered up 12 baskets of leftovers. I'm sure they were going to use that later to feed those who had probably not taken part in this feast or those who were less privileged or were unable to get there. And so Jesus started to use it as a teaching point. Labor not, he said to them, for the feast, for the meat that perisheth. Labor for the myth that endureth unto everlasting life. Because I am the bread of life. Hey, remember he said, your fathers, your ancestors were given bread from heaven in form of manna when they walked in the wilderness. They ate it and they perished. But this bread that I speak about is a bread that has come down from heaven to give life to the world. By that, Jesus was speaking about himself. But they didn't understand the message because he had said to them, I, Jesus, I am the bread of life. The bread that has come down from heaven to give you eternal life and to give you true satisfaction in life. Because I am the bread that has come from God to give life to the world, verse 33 to 34. Because this true bread that has come from heaven gives life to all who come to him. 
And today, as we reflect on this, I want to remind you that the scripture says in John 3, 16, that for God so loved the world, that whosoever that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. And today, as we reflect on this very interesting testimony of what Jesus did with the five loaves and two small fish. God, through Jesus Christ, can make the impossible possible in our lives. He can turn our situations around, just as Jesus took control of this situation. And my friends today, I can tell you my, from my own personal experience, for a number of weeks, I was unwell. I was admitted into the hospital in ICU. And I cannot tell you what the doctor said about my condition, about my situation. I was so ill with a nasty chest infection and other things that it was almost a touch and go situation. But the church prayed for me. My family prayed. You all prayed. And God turned the situation around. And within two weeks, I was discharged from ITU after 10 days into the woods. And within three weeks, I was discharged home. And I got home and started to recuperate at home. And today, look at me. I'm here. And all this happened just before the breakout of the COVID infections. Because our God can turn impossible situations around. Be it health challenges, or personal challenges, or financial challenges, or marital challenges, or challenges that you cannot even talk about publicly, because there is nothing impossible with God. In fact, being like Jesus is about believing that God can make the impossible possible. Because the scripture says that to him that believes, all things shall be possible. And I ask you today, my friends, what would you lose by putting your faith in Jesus Christ? Perhaps your personal pride. Perhaps your ego. Perhaps your ability to say, "I ah, yes, I dealt with it myself. Forget about it. That's not in compared to what God can do in your life. I gave up my personal pride. I gave up my personal ego in order to trust Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And today, I have no regrets whatsoever. And I can tell you that this true bread that has come from heaven to reveal God's love to us is the true bread that will give you true satisfaction in life. Because come to think about it, as we stand here to speak now, over 100,000 people have died from the COVID-19 COVID epidemic, pandemic in our country. Just to think about it, this time last year, at the beginning of the pandemic, those 100,000 people were with us. They were alive, they were kicking, they were getting on with their lives our loved ones, our friends, our colleagues, our contemporaries. Today, they're no longer with us. And I can assure you, my friend, your life is not in your hands. Neither is my life in my hands. Our lives are in the hands of him who made us and gives us breath and the ability to stand up daily to worship him and to serve other people and to be of value to our world. So I plead with you today, my friends, let Jesus Christ, the master and Lord of my life, who has proven his lordship in the lives of millions of people all over our world today, let him into your life and see the difference that would make. You'll be amazed that 
this bread from heaven will bring true satisfaction to your life. Look at what he said. He said, I am the true bread that has come from heaven. Anyone who comes to me will never be hungry. And anyone who believes in me will never be thirsty. Because he, he will give you true satisfaction and fulfillment in life. I'm not saying that there'll be no more challenges in your life. That's not what I'm saying. But he will be in complete control of everything, like he did in this situation. Imagine those 5,000 people who didn't know where their next meal was going to come from. Jesus took the lunch of a lad, perhaps a seven to nine-year-old kid, just three barley loaves, five barley loaves, and two small fish that his mother had wrapped up for him to take along on this religious journey that he went with. Perhaps his dad and other grown-ups from the community. But that young chap offered it to Jesus, and it made a difference, not only to his life, but to the life of so many thousand people. That is how it is. And that is how it will be. Hey, when you offer what you think is nothing to write home about, I mean, your life, your personal experiences, you may think it doesn't count because I'm, no, I'm nobody. I'm a nobody. Nobody knows me. Nobody cares about me. Hey, God cares about you. And I tell you today, if you turn your little in your life, little life in your eyes, into his hands. He will turn it into something great. He's done it for me. He's done it for millions of people all over the world. I can assure you that. Because God makes the <laughs> impossible possible in our lives. And I can testify to you, as I shared with you about my own health challenges, I can tell you stories upon stories upon stories, but time will not permit me to do that. It will look like I'm talking a bit about myself. I don't want to do that today. I want to talk only about Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. So my friend, remember, just as Jesus took control of that situation and made the impossible possible, he can take control of your life and turn things round and make the impossible possible. Trust him today with your life. Lean on him and hand over to him those difficulties and challenges that you're trying to deal with yourself. He wants to help you. He wants to make a difference in your life. That's why, he's came. That's why he came into the world. That's what his text tells us, that I am the bread that's come down from heaven to give life to men and to women, boys and girls. Hey, so accept him today as your Lord and personal Savior and you'll find true peace and satisfaction. Hey, if you're already a Christian, trust him. Turn everything to him. Just turn it over to him and say, Lord Jesus, I turn all these challenges to you. Take them and do what you want with them. And I can assure you, he's an unfailing God that is faithful and worthy to be trusted. He would never fail you. He has never failed me in over almost 40 years of being a Christian. He is so faithful and he will turn your impossible challenges into open opportunities and testimonies of his faithfulness. So if you're a Christian, thank God for that. Trust him with your life. Stand strong upon the authority of the word. Spend time in prayer and reflecting on the scriptures as a true disciple. And make time to meditate on his word and let him take control of your life. If you're not a Christian, hey, there's no, all hope is not gone yet. Today you can make things right by saying, I'm sorry for my sins. I repent of my sins. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Come into my life, Lord Jesus, and be Lord of my life. And I accept you today as my personal Lord and Savior. And Jesus will make a difference in your life. May God bless you as you do that.
And I can assure you there's opportunity for prayer ministry in St. Peter's Church today. So hang on. Don't, don't switch off. They're going to tell you exactly what to do. About how to get into the prayer rooms and where people will pray for you. God bless you and thank you for listening. And Father, may you bless these words to us. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm.